Yes, Elizabeth. I've told them to be round at the house at eight o'clock tonight. Yes. Just a few sandwiches and some beer. That should get them all in a convivial mood. Yeah. You don't think we ought to give them beer? <laughs> no, no, no. Of course they won't get drunk and start smashing the house up. It... <laughs> My men are not hooligans. Just a minute, Elizabeth. Someone at the door. Come in. I'm so sorry, sir. I, I, I didn't know you were on the phone. It's all right, Wilson. Have a seat. Well, thank you, sir. I won't be a minute. Just uh, talking to the little woman. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, look here, Elizabeth. I... What? Oh. No. No, no, I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you wore your side and suit. <laughs> After all, Winston Churchill wears one. <laughs> Not quite the same thing. No, well, never mind, but... Oh, very well, then. Goodbye, dear. I'm sorry about that, Wilson. Just discussing tonight's party. I must say I'm looking forward to it, sir. Do you know this will be the first time that I've visited your house? Well, we haven't done much entertaining since the war started. Mm. I thought the time had come for some of the platoon to get together in civilian clothes and meet on equal terms. Well, that's very democratic of you, sir. Of course, I realise that it's even more difficult for you, Wilson... As your superior here at the bank and your commanding officer in the platoon, we don't get much chance to meet as equals. No, we don't, sir. No, no. However, tonight, you may call me George. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. And I shall call you Arthur. Mm. Oh, that will be nice. <laughs> Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Manring. Would you sign these letters, please? Yes, yes, all right, Pike. You may as well wait. I'll, uh, I'll do them now. Oh, thank you, sir. Uncle Arthur, mm. I am excited, aren't you? Well, no, not really, Frank. I, I've seen Mr. Mannering sign letters before. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean about the party tonight. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, well, yes, so am I, yes. George has just been telling me all about it. George who? <laughs> Mr. Mannering, of course. Wilson, sir. I said you could call me George at the party, not here at the bank. Oh. So sorry, sir. It's a slip of the tongue. Can I call you George at the party, Mr. Manry? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> so something just occurred to me, sir. Let's hope it won't be tonight that the balloon goes up. Oh, we're having balloons as well. <laughs> we're not having balloons, you stupid boy. But I must say, Wilson, I'm really looking forward to 8 o'clock this evening. All of us gathered together in my sitting room... Civilian clothes in a nice, happy, relaxed, carefree atmosphere. Nothing like it. Nice of you all to come. Yeah, well, it's nice of you to ask us, <clears throat> George. <laughs> oh, hi. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice indeed. I'm ah, glad you were able to make it, Charles. It's a lovely party, Mr. Manreen. <laughs> yes. I'm enjoying myself, sir. Definitely, sir. No, oh, please, please. George. My name's not George, sir. It's Jack. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I want you to call me George. Jack. I say, Arthur, mm -hmm. look at the time. Joe's late. My goodness, so he is, George. <laughs> well, now, uh, <clears throat> my wife will be down in a moment, and uh, then we can start on the refreshments. I must say, I'm looking forward to meeting your good lady, sir. Uh, George. <laughs> Sir George, what are you talking about Godfrey? He hasn't been knighted yet. <laughs> ah, I expect that's Joe. Let him in, Pike. Yes, Mr. Mannerine. <laughs> well, Fraser. J uh, James. How's business? Oh, I can't complain. I the lady in today who ordered one of my best oak coffins. Her husband dropped down dead. Just like that. One minute he was here, the next minute he was gone. 
How terrible. Uh, just about your age and Beldy was. <laughs> he went out like a light, George. Did he really? Joe Walker and lady friend. What? Even all. You know, show, don't you, Mr. Mannering? We have met. I told you this was Stag Walker. I'll talk to you later. Oh, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. <laughs> Georgie! <laughs> Trust Joe to turn up with a tart. Look at the pair of them. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll just go and see how my wife's getting on. Well, I must say, I'd have thought old Mannering would have had a better place than this. I've never seen such a load of old rubbish. Ah, there's nothing here worth the pence. Hey, hey, no, look. This little glass ornament's nice, isn't it? Eh? No, it's, it's full of water. It's got a little cottage inside it. Uh, Sissy and I have got one of those at home. They're, they're very pretty. You shake them hard and they make a snowstorm. Really? <laughs> what? That is? Oh, yeah. Oh, so it does. Hey, look, Uncle Arthur, isn't it pretty? Yes, it is. Awfully nice, Frank. Yes. Hey, I, I think I'm going to have another go. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The bottom's come off. All <laughs> oh, the snow's fallen out and all the water. <laughs> We've done it now, Pikey. Mr. George will be furious. I don't suppose he'll be that keen on you wetting his carpet either. <laughs> oh, Uncle Arthur, what am I going to do? I've really no idea, Frank. Why can't you leave things alone? Here, give it to me, Pikey. Here you are, Joe. What, what are you going to do with it? Fill it up with water from this goldfish bowl. I oh, see. <laughs> there you are. Now, give us a bottom, Pikey. There you are. Now, if we screw it up again, he probably won't notice that the snow's all gone. There. Yes, all right, Elizabeth. Don't be long, my dear. Sorry I've been such a long time. Is everyone enjoying themselves? Oh, I haven't been to a party like this for a year. <laughs> oh, good. Oh. Well, uh, my wife may be a few more minutes, so I think we'd, we'll start without her. Arthur, uh, perhaps you'd hand those sandwiches around. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right here, George. I'll look after the drinks. Beer, everybody? Good, oh, good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. I suppose I should start with the lady. Oh, tar ever so. What lovely glasses. They're so little. <laughs> well, I thought we'd have our beer in these wine glasses. They, they make it more like a festive occasion. Aye, uh, and they make it go further. <laughs> Cheers, then, everybody. Cheers, 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 sir. Cheers sir. Now, uh, haven't shown you round yet, have I? No. I've got uh, several curios and antiques that you might be interested in. Load of rubbish. For instance, this uh, little glass ornament on the mantelpiece belonged to my mother. It's Victorian, you know. Ah, uh -huh, and so was she. <laughs> if you take it, uh, you'll, uh, you'll get a snowstorm. I wouldn't bank on it. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, is, is there something wrong then, Mr. Henry? Well, as I was looking at the little cottage, I could have sworn a fish swam out of the front door. <laughs> Miss Mannerine, who's that portrait of over the fireplace? Ah, that's my late father. Wonderful man. He had a flourishing tailor's business on the parade at Eastbourne. He was a member of the Master Tailor's Guild. Did he make that suit you're wearing, Mr. Mannerine? <laughs> of course he didn't. He died in 1922. Oh, and so did that suit. <laughs> I said my dad played the flute. Really? Ah, that sounds like Elizabeth. <laughs> Must be coming down. Straight through the ceiling. <laughs> I'll just go and tell her the party's in full swing. Excuse me a moment. Yeah, sure. I think she was quite right to give up the belly lesson. <laughs> sounds like the front door, Frank. Uh, you had better go and see who it is. Yes, all right, Uncle Arthur. Right. Oh. I wish that Mrs. Mannering would hurry up. The sooner we get this ridiculous charade over, the better. I can't help that. I've got no. my duty to do. Sounds like that awful warden fella. Now, come on, mate. Here, what's going on in here? Look, I've told you, Mr. Rogers, we're having a party. Party, eh? Blimey. None of you look very jolly. Can't be much of a do. Now, here, uh, Hodges, this party's nothing to do with you. It's private. Oh, really? Where's Mannering? He's upstairs with his good lady. 
Oh, it's one of those sort of parties, is it? <laughs> How dare you burst into a private house like this? Just clear off, will you? Don't you give me that, mate. I'm here on business. I was passing and I saw a light flashing from upstairs. <clears throat> Mrs. Manning won't be a moment. She's just... What do you want, Warden? You were shown a light. Oh, that was my wife. She inadvertently stumbled against the blackout curtain. Aye, oh, I've been at the bismuth again, has she? <laughs> I shall ignore your vulgarity. Cool. Well, blimey, here we go again. Well, I'm off to report to headquarters. Here, you lot aren't going to stand around here with a raid on, are you? What we do is our own affair. Probably only a solitary plane. The last twitchings of the wounded Nazi beast. <laughs> quick, down on the floor, everybody. <laughs> Here, sure, quick. Get down here under the table. We'll be safe here. Yeah? You must be joking when you're about a girl's not safe anywhere. <laughs> that one's not far away. Neither of those. Neither. Oh, I think I'd better find out where that lot landed. Uh, can I use your phone, Mannering? Yes, carry on. Right. Don't you think we ought to go down to the church hall, sir? Let's uh, see where those bombs are. Hello? Is that you, Gerald? Look, any idea where that lot come down? Yeah. One on the allotments, right? One on the taxi garage. Any casualties? No, good. Where was the third one? I see. That's a bit of luck. Yeah. Good job it was closed. Right, oh, I'm coming back now. Cheerio. Good job what was closed? The bank. The bank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bomb on the bank? Is it bomb on the bank? Don't panic! Don't panic! Bomb on the bank! Well, thank you. Right, come on, man. Let's get down there right away. Jones, Fraser, Godfrey, right, Pike. Walker. Yeah, just a minute. Where is Walker? I'm down here, sir. Why are you under the table? It can't be because you had too much to drink, sir. Joe told me I'd be safe under here. Nothing would touch me. <laughs> He's a terrible liar. <laughs> Come on out, both of you. Well, I'm off. I've had enough excitement for one evening. That's what you said last night. Ooh. You're doing nothing of the sort, young lady. Right, everybody, follow me. We've got to get down to the bank. I need all the help I can get. Ah, chat. No, we'll never know what Mrs. Mannering looks like. <laughs> Dear, and you made an awful mess of the vault, hasn't it, sir? Yes, has indeed. Be careful, Jones. That wall doesn't look very safe. Don't lean on it. I'm not, sir. I'm stopping it from falling over. <laughs> Boy, she, well done. Wilson, shine your torch over there. All right, sir. Blimey. Look at all that lovely lolly. Pike, go the door. Where is it, Mr. Manreen? What? <laughs> Oh, well, guard what's left of it. Well, what are we going to do now, sir? We've got to get all this money together and take it to a place that's secure, where we can keep an eye on it. I know. We'll take it down to the church hall. There's just one thing, George. We're not at the party now, Wilson. Oh, sorry, sir. What I was going to say was, uh, uh, what are we going to carry it in? Ah, yes, yes, that is a problem. My sister says she always keeps her money in a mattress. that you can get one and pull all the studding out. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. I've got an idea. Why don't we get the curtains out of your office? We could make a sort of bag thing and carry the money in that. That's good thinking, Pike. Yes, go and get them. Right, right, thank you. All right, young lady, you can go. Shan't need you anymore. Blimey, you've got a cheek. A bigger pardon? You're just like all men. You use girls, and when you don't want them anymore, you cast them off. I don't know what you're talking about. You old men are worse than the young ones. How oh, dare you. Walker, can't you see this young lady of yours off the premises? Yeah, all right, sir. Come on, Shaw. OK, Joe. Good night, Mr. Mannering. I'd like to say it's been lovely, but it hasn't. Be seeing you. <coughs> Wilson, uh, I think I shall have a word with Walker about the company he keeps. Where does he find girls like that? Well, I expect Walker would tell you for a small consideration, George. <laughs> Are you suggesting that... Uh, now, for the last time, will you stop calling me by my Christian name? Oh, sorry, sir, but, uh, but you started it. I just don't seem to be able to get out of the habit. Right, mind how you go, man. Keep your end level, Jones. Right, sir. Right. Put it down. Slowly. Good. Wilson, mm -hmm. how much money did we have in the vault? Well, according to the books, uh, 90, 96,478 pounds, 11 shillings and fourpence. Right. Now, what we've got to do now is to count it. Come back, Mr. Manreen. Ah, Pike. 
Did you get on to the manager of the Eastgate branch? Yes, Mr. Manning. He said we can take the money over to his bank tomorrow morning and put it in his vault. Good. Now, look, Wilson. Mm-hmm. You get on the phone yeah. and order a taxi to take us to Eastgate at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, sir. Now, pay attention, men. This money has got to be counted. Mr. Speak, sir. What is it, Jones? Well, sir, I'd like to volunteer to be a counter, sir. Let me be a counter. I've done a lot of counting in my time. When I was in the Sudan, I used to count sheep. <laughs> well, not because I wanted to go to sleep, you understand, but because we wanted to know how many sheep we had. Yes, know. yes, all right, Jones. Now, now look here. Of course, I the see... CO, he was very partial to a bit of roast mutton, you know, sir. I remember he used to say to me, Jones, he used to call me that, you know, sir. I'd like a sheep's head this weekend and leave the eyes in. I want it to see us through the week. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you can count the five pound notes. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Walker, you will count the uh, one pound notes. Yes, you are, Mr. Manning. Pike, you take the silver. Sir. And Fraser, the copper. Ah, uh, wait a minute, sir. Why should I count the dirty copper? Why can I not count the five pound notes instead of that old fool? Here, who you calling an old fool? You get on and count the dirty copper like the officer says. Yes, right. I don't no, want no, to no, no, be, quiet, be, be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet, both of you. Stop arguing. Go and set up a couple of trestle tables. I've been on the phone, sir, but I'm afraid I can't get a taxi for tomorrow morning. What do you mean? Why Why not? uh, One of the bombs fell on the garage and both the taxis are out of action. But we've got to get that money over to Eastgate somehow. Yes, I know. Too far to carry it. Only Jones hadn't lent his van to that fellow in Eastbourne. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. If you could let me off for a little while, I think I could get us some transport. Really, Pike? Off you go, then. Thank you, Mr. Manreen. Well, sir, you'd better take over counting the silver until Pike gets back. Very well, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Manwin. We've got the trestle table set up. Uh, can we start counting? Yes, Jones. Off you go. Sir. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 2,450, 22,455, 22,460, 22,400... No, wait a minute, no. (laughs) No, no, that's wrong. No, no. Oh, oh, well. Five. (laughs) Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. How's the copper going, Fraser? Just look what he's done to my hands, Mr. Monroe. He's turned them all green. That's all right, Saffy. Now they match your face. <laughs> that does it, Mr. Monroe. Either I count the five pound notes or I'm going home. Oh, all right. Change places, the Jones. Now, that's not fair, sir. Don't, Don't argue, fair, Jones. Ah, oh, this must be fine. I'll go and see how he got off. That's all right, sir. <sighs> I'm back, Mr. Manry. What's that thing you're pushing? It's a Boy Scout's handcart. <laughs> I borrowed it from Barry Roberts. He's the pack leader for the Owl Patrol. I used to be an owl. I think they're the best, but I wanted yeah, to be yeah, a raven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a owl. Never mind. Never mind. Surely you're not suggesting that we use this cart to take ninety-six thousand pounds over to Eastgate in? Yeah. Wilson, come over here a minute, will you? Coming, sir. Look at this handcart. Mm-hmm. You'd never guess it, would you? But this is Pike's idea of transport for carrying the money. Well, that's awfully good, sir, isn't it? <laughs> They're quite right, no one would ever guess, would they? Very clever. What was that you said? I was just saying, sir, I think it's a marvellous idea. I mean... Who would ever suspect that we were transporting 96,000 pounds over to Eastgate on a Scout's handcart? <coughs> yes. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> I must say, I was rather pleased with the idea when I first conceived it. <laughs> I really don't know how you think of these things, you know. Uh, it's all part of leadership, Wilson. Yeah, but I tell you what, sir, why don't we let Frank push the cart wearing his old Scout uniform? Well, yes. Of course. That was all part of my master plan. Really, sir? I don't remember you mentioning it. No, no, I didn't. You see, I've learned not to reveal all the facets of my little schemes at one go. Oh, no, no. 
Otherwise, people like yourself might feel that they weren't getting a chance to contribute anything. Yes, well, I see, sir, but uh, how awfully thoughtful of you. By the way, uh, the counting shouldn't take much uh, longer, uh, as it's almost 3.30 in the morning. Have you, um, have you got any plans for the men? In what way? Well, I, I just think they'd like to get back to their homes with such a few hours sleep. I mean, they all have jobs to go to tomorrow. And really, the money is our responsibility, isn't it? It's not theirs. Yes, yes, I suppose that is true, yes. All right, Wilson. As soon as they finish counting it, they can go. And you and I, and Pike, can look after it until the morning. After all, it should be safe enough. Nobody knows it's here except right, us. Right, sir, right. I'll go and tell the men. Yeah, just a minute. We won't be able to put the money on the cart as it is. We'll need some sort of container. Yeah, here, Mr. Mannering, I've, uh, I've got an idea. I don't want to buy anything, Walker. <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's just in the choir room, there's a big laundry basket full of dirty surpluses. I mean, that'd do, wouldn't it? Excellent, yes. Well done, Walker. Corporal Jones, yeah. go with Walker and get it from the choir room. Yes, sir, there's just one thing. What should we do with the surplus surpluses? No, I don't care what we do with them. Get, go, go and get on me. Right there, sir. Come on, Joe. Come in, Josie. You know, Wilson, I should think head office would be very grateful having this money saved. Might even mean promotion. Mm, that'd be nice, sir. I'd like that. Not you, me. <laughs> oh. Yes, of course, sir, yes. Hey, Captain Mannering, didn't I forget to tell those bloated capitalists that I was up into the wee small hours counting their filthy lucre? Yes, all right, Fraser. Why does Fraser have to spoil everything by being so bolshy? I have no idea, sir. Here you are, sir. Here's the basket. Oh, jolly good. Take it over there by the table. Right, oh, sir. Come on, Joe. Right. That basket doesn't look awfully secure, sir. I suppose the money will be safe. Well, I'll tell you what. We won't take any chances. When we've got the money in, we'll lock it in the choir room for the night, and the three of us can work out a rota for guard duty outside the door. I see. Oh, by the way, sir, I've had a word with Pike, and he is quite prepared to wear his Boy Scout uniform tomorrow morning, but he says he'll have to go home tonight to get it aired. Get it aired? Yes. You see, he hasn't worn it for some time, and his mother won't let him wear anything that hasn't been properly aired. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sake. But, that means that it'll just be you and me to look after the money. Yes, well, that, uh, actually, that brings me to my next point, you see. Pike doesn't really want to walk home by himself. He doesn't like the dark, you see. So. <laughs> it's about time that boy grew up. All right, I'll see you both back here in the morning at nine o'clock. Godfrey, Godfrey, can I have a word with you? Oh, yes, Mr. Bannery, yes. I care, Godfrey. I'm going to remain here for the rest of the night and make sure nobody runs off with the money. I'm sending everybody else home, but I would like someone to stay here with me. Yes, of course, Mr. Manning, I'd love to. Good, right. Thank you. Uh, sir, just one thing, sir. What's that? Well, I do have an appointment at the clinic at 9.30. We shall be awake by then, shall we? Awake? <laughs> you and I will be on guard outside the choir room door. Inside there will be a basket containing 96,000 pounds. Of course we shall be awake. <laughs> Mr. Mannering. Wake up, Mr. Mannering. Oh, yeah, right. Yes, yes. What? Wilson well, <laughs> well, and Pike. Oh, right, well, yeah. <laughs> Must have just dozed off in the last few minutes. Wait, where's Godfrey? He's outside the door of the choir room. Oh, good. Knowing him, I thought he might have popped into the gents. Well, I expect he will when he wakes up. He wakes up? <laughs> oh, really, this is too bad. Anyway, let's unlock the choir room. Get the basket. Come on, Godfrey. Godfrey, wake up! Oh, wake up! Oh, 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 thank you, Sissy. Uh, leave it on the bedside cabinet. Godfrey, Godfrey! <laughs> Not your sister, it's Captain Mannering. Oh, oh, oh hello, Captain Mannering. I'm awfully sorry. I, I must have dozed off. Pike, here's the key. I'll lock the door, and then you and Godfrey go in and get the basket, bring it out here, and we load it onto the cart. Right you are, Mr. Manreen. You know, Wilson, once we've taken the money over to the Eastgate branch, we'd better think about getting some repairs done to our vaults. Yes, sir. Mr. Manreen? Mr. Manreen? Yes, what is it, Pike? He's not there. <laughs> Gone. What has? What are you talking about? Uh, the basket, Mr. Manreen. It's gone. Don't be ridiculous. How could it have gone? The door was locked. Yes, and you were sleeping outside. <laughs> but there's another door leading into the street. This is terrible. But what will head office say? Well, I don't think they'll be frightfully pleased, sir. 
What's going on in here? It's you, Warden. What do you want? I've had reports that there was a lot of activity here during the night. Lights spilling out all over the place. Was that you lot? Well, just clear off, will you? We're rather busy. Don't you talk to me like that, mate. I nearly got killed just now. All because I had to come here to see you lot of hooligans. How dare you. Anyway, what are you talking about? All I know is, mate, as I rode up here, I nearly got knocked off my bike by the laundry van driving off a leather down the hill. I could have been very, very serious. Just a minute. What laundry van? The Primrose Hand Laundry. Oh, they're very good. Uh, Sissy and I send our things to them. <laughs> my mum says I don't put enough starch in our pillowcases. Don't be quiet, both of you. Alison Hodges... Did that van call here this morning? Of course it did. Does every Friday. Picks up the dirty surpluses, that sort of thing. They've got their own key to the side door. Wilson, you're thinking what I'm thinking. For once, I think I am, sir. <laughs> Come on, we've got to get down to that laundry. What's the hurry? Do you mind not interfering? This has nothing whatever to do with you. But please, yes, help, mate. But you're wasting your time going down to the laundry. It'll be ours before the van gets back there. He's got all these other pickups around the town to do first. Right. Now, where does the van call at next? I said, where does the van call at next? Hodges, did you hear what I said? Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with my hearing. <laughs> well, why didn't you answer? You told me it was nothing to do with me. No, oh, don't be ridiculous. Where does it go next? Ask nicely. <laughs> what do you mean? Say please. <laughs> where does the van go next? Please. I haven't the vaguest idea. <laughs> if it's any help, I, I've noticed the driver sometimes calls down the road at the convent. I expect he goes there to pick up the nun's dirty habits. <laughs> That is a very old joke. They're very old nuns. Be quiet. <laughs> now, come on. Better get down to the convent. All right, sir. I don't find the situation particularly funny, Wilson. I'm so sorry, sir. It's <laughs> it's just that I've, uh, I just thought of something. What is that? Well, if we don't get the laundry on time... Fraser will never again be able to call our 96,000 pounds filthy lucre. 